YouTube, all you Minimax owners, uh, Minimax 1100. This is Marshall coming at you. I'm getting ready to install a ballistic parachute recovery system in my Minimax. You see, I've got the turtle deck taken off. I had to go in, and uh, in fact, this was built prior to this being installed, so there's no room to get it in there without having to cut the fabric. So what I'm gonna do, if you'll notice inside, that space in the bottom, which is light kind of dim, but that space in the bottom side of the fuselage that I'm gonna cut out. And what I've done is I've insta installed a lingerie spacer, which is right, you probably can't see it, it's so dark in here. Uh, between the Lingeron and the fabric I put a piece of two inch flat spruce and glued it in place to the fabric and to the lingerie so it would take up that gap between it so when I cut it out I won't lose any tension on the fabric so I'm gonna have to cut out a piece between the two lingerons <laughs> you can see under there the back part of this all the way up to the front to where the first hatch is at that goes under the seat I'm gonna cut this out so I can have access to put that ballistic parachute up in there what mounts it's already the mounts already been cut out for the straps to fit and you can't see it but they're they're inside and it's going to mount this ballistic parachute via these straps whoops via these straps on the back they mount to the cross members inside the fuselage you can see these they're going to strap in it's going to sit in kind of like so and uh the rocket part is going to come up through the fabric i'm going to make a little hatch where I can have the access for that rocket to come out and it's going to have a flap that just covers over that and I, again i'm going to have to uh cut out an excess port and then put some put a uh, frame around it so the fabric won't, won't lose its tension right here and then i'm going to mount the parachute in and see these straps they're going to go up it's going to hold it up like so and this is going to attach the parachute ring and it's going to be folded over the turtle deck and that's why I have to make this excess because all this has got the stuff down inside of here so when, when, it, when the rocket ignites it's going to go up pulling the straps up with it so it's got to be able to pull the straps up through this hole that I'm going to make right here so actually I'm pretty much waiting on the glue to drive I already glued the support piece in there to hold the fabric to keep it from losing tension once I cut this out then I'm going to make another hatch to cover that up and this already has one hatch that's been cut out for excess. And you can see up inside the fuselage right behind the seat where you can get to the uh, vital parts of the aircraft inside of there. Once I get this done, it should be pretty good. Also, I'm gonna run my pull ring igniter handle. I'm gonna mount that in the fuselage right there on the side where I can have access to it. I'm gonna pull it in case of an emergency. My wife's been on to me about this. I've been flying this without it. <clears throat> it's kind of getting on her nerves and kind of making her kind of fearful about me flying this plane without a ballistic parachute. Even though there's a lot of them out there that are flying without it, that doesn't make a, 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 any excuse for me not to have one. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in. It came with the airplane. I never did put it in. I've had it for about seven months now. I've had several flights on it. You can see some of my flights on YouTube on my channel. Got my wings stored back here on a rack that I built. Like a rolling dolly rack. They're mounted on that and it rolls. And a lot of, it's, it's also, I have the plane roller, uh, mounted on the uh, dollies too, I can roll around the garage. And uh, it came out real well. The plane is very, very nice. It's a nice plane about this from Pensacola, Florida, because you may have seen that in, on uh, eBay. I uh, paid 4500 bucks for it, not too bad. That's including travel time and uh, uh, expenses. Sold for 4000 I, I probably have about, oh, right now, maybe 4,500 into it, I hadn't done too much to it. I added a landing light to the front. You can see down there. And the landing light, it's gonna be wired into a rectifier that runs off my uh, <clears throat> magneto drive, a magneto system on the, on the engine, which is already wired to my strobe lights. I went ahead and put a uh, rectifier in it because it has AC coming off of it, converted it to DC. I'm waiting now to get me a regulator to put in there so I can keep it regulated at 12 volts. It goes up when it's running, I say about 3,000 RPM. I'm running at about 24, 24 volts DC, which is a little high, quite high, actually, for my lights and stuff on this uh, particular setup. And these strobe lights have already been adapted to where they work 
according to the voltage requirements, they've already been set. But I need to do the same thing for this uh, uh, landing light that I have. You see, I have my GPS, uh, my radio mount right here, a compass mounted on it, and full, full instrumentation, uh, auxiliary throttle, throttle. I also have my choke, I moved it, and I made a lever right here. We can adjust my choke with this. It used to be up on the top, I didn't have very much travel, so I moved it down here where I have an actual lever. And then you see my elevator trim down here. And so, uh, it should be pretty good. And I feel a little bit more confident with it now, with putting this, putting this uh, ballistic parachute system in here. But uh, I'll keep you informed on the progress right now. I'm just waiting for the glue to dry. Uh, tomorrow I'm going ahead and cut that panel out, then I'm going to make me a frame, or I'm sorry, make me a panel. And I'm going to use blind screws to hold it in place. And then uh, I should have access to that once I put that in, that should be, should be really well. Come out pretty good. I also have my brakes hooked up. Well, not completed yet, but I, I made me some friction brakes. <clears throat> As you can see down here, there will be a cable coming up that goes up to the, pull, to the cockpit with a, like a motorcycle brake helmet. And it'll pull these up. So you, you can see they push down. I'll use a bicycle, a bicycle brake pad on the end of this, this lever here. And it provides quite a bit of friction. It should be good to stop it. I'm not looking for anything very dramatic. I just want something just to stop me from rolling when I don't need to be rolling. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hold back for engine run up, but I'll try that and see how it works. That'll be good for that. Being a tail dragger, I really don't want to apply too much brakes on it because you know the nose over issues. I don't want to get into that. So actually just be used for holding it stationary for engine run ups and uh, maybe keep it from coasting when I'm running up to uh, running off the taxiway until the, until the runway. I want to be able to stop. Uh, I've been flying it without brakes. Uh, usually take off and land it in the grass. Haven't had any problems with that. Real good. Uh, doesn't roll very far after I shut the motor down or go into idle. It stops pretty quick. But on concrete, it wants to have a tendency to keep rolling. So I'm going to get that hooked up so I have brakes for that. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, like I said, I'll keep you informed on what I got going on on the Mini Max. And you can see it. I got my turbo deck. Of course, my turbo deck is off. And I'll put it back once everything's back in place. And I get the parachute mounted in. Give my access hole cut right here with these straps and go in. And then the only thing I really have an issue with is the fact that the strap is so far back, it's way behind the center of gravity. So if those things were to deploy and I was to be descending, the nose would probably be probably like a 45 degrees or more angle towards the ground. And the only thing I'm worried about after that would be the prop hitting the ground and breaking. Which probably if something would have happened if I was in my right mind or I had enough consciousness to be aware of what's going on, I could probably pull my uh, pull starter and just move this prop horizontal so it'll be like that when it does happen to touch down on the ground. Uh, I'm not sure what the descent rate is going to be with this parachute, but it's supposed to be able to hold quite a bit more than what this plane weighs, so it should be able to de descend at a decent rate without doing any further damage to the plane as it hits the ground. But other than that, I'm going to keep you informed. Thanks for watching.